Get the latest movie reviews, Hollywood news, and inside views. It's time for Behind the Screens with Lights, Lights Camera, Camera Jackson, Jackson on 1077 GNA. He's the best professional film critic, our friend Lights Camera Jackson. He's going to take us behind the screens on a couple of new films opening up this weekend. We'll also address uh, the latest ruling over at Colony Center in regards to uh, reserve seating. Good morning, Jackson. Happy Friday, buddy. Happy free 4th of July weekend. It's the first 4th of July weekend, and then because it's on a Wednesday, we have a second 4th of July no. weekend, technically. Bonus. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Not bad at all. Uh, so um, talk to us about what's new this weekend and how you think it's going to do versus the Jurassic World that opened up last week. Oh, yeah. Jurassic World will still be number one, and Incredibles will still be number two. But there's two new movies opening up. I saw one of them last night, Sicario Day of the Soldado. This is the sequel to 2015's action thriller Sicario, starring Emily Blunt. Now, Emily Blunt is not in this movie, but the other two main co-stars of the first film are back, Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin. It's all about the cartel, stuff happening on the U.S. and Mexico border, drugs, people, getting them through the border, things like that. It's, it's a long film. It drags. It's predictable in spots. Not a lot of excitement. The first Sicario movie had two back-to-back -back scenes towards the end, primarily focusing on Benicio Del Toro's character, that were jaw droppers. And this movie tries to give you that shock value right out of the gate, and it doesn't quite get there. I was kind of bored by this through through most of it. If you if you like the first movie, I think you're going to be disappointed by this. It's not as unique or memorable. Now, I'm, I remember watching a lot of NBA uh, NBA finals. They were really promoting this Uncle Drew, um, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a basketball movie. Is with it comedy? Comedy. I think it's supposed to be pretty funny, right? Yes, it's based on the character played by Kyrie Irving in those Pepsi ads that you've seen over the past half dozen years or so. So Kyrie Irving's Uncle Drew, Lil Rel Howery's in it, Shaq is in it, Tiffany Haddish, who is everywhere. My girl Tiffany Haddish is in this movie. I think it's going to be really funny. This is going to be a piece of escapism for the 4th of July weekend. Fun summer entertainment. It looks good. It's a basketball comedy, rival teams, things like that. Silly, fun. This should be good. I'm going to go see this today. All right, let's talk about a story that has been swirling for a couple of days now. Uh, Colony Center has decided to uh, start a new policy in regards to reserve seating. So the days of just showing up in the theater, especially on crowded shows where I think it's, what, 25 to 50 percent capacity, yeah. whatever it is, you have to have a seat. Seats will be numbered, kind of like going to an event. Go to go to a you know a a concert, concert, go anything, to a sporting yeah. event, same thing. Mm -hmm. So, what's your take on this and what Colony Center is doing? Yeah, so two weeks ago I was there for Incredibles, and I was talking with some of the managers over there about that they were going to implement this the next weekend for Jurassic World. This was not their decision. It was Regal's decision. Regal basically said to them, we are choosing you as a theater in this country to start the reserved seating. So I've been to a lot of theaters in New York City and Los Angeles, AMC, Regal, other chains, where this reserved seating does happen. You either do it online through Fandango or another outlet, or when you go up to the ticket counter, they give you that screen and they say you need to pick your seats. And when it's the daytime, when it's about noon and there are only like 10 people in the room, you do have free reign, but when it gets more crowded, it is a little tougher to find the good seats and to have a visual imagery of what the theater exactly looks like. So this is now being implemented. I said to the managers, this is going to take more time for everybody. It's really not going to speed up the process, but they think more people are going to be online and doing this in advance. And when it comes to, like, sold-out shows or if they need to move certain films to different rooms, that's definitely going to shake things up as far as which seat everybody now gets. So yeah. this is at Regal Colony Center only, one of the only theaters in the area, if not the only one that is doing this, that has implemented this. Uh, it started last Friday and uh, is going in indefinitely. You know what, Jackson, let me ask you this. So say I go on and uh, they don't know how this movie's going to do, just a generic movie, said mm -hmm. movie. And, um, and I buy my tickets, but I don't have to reserve a seat because it's not 25% full. What do I do when I get there? Do they tell me I have to go back out and get a seat number? If it's you see, that's interesting, the, the not 25% thing. I'm not, I'm not fully yeah, sure about know. that. And I still want, I'm going to talk to some of these guys today about some more of the facts. When I went online looking at uh, Uncle Drew, because I want to see Uncle Drew today, it had already said that um, eight people had gotten tickets. This was the other day. Eight 
seats were already reserved and that it's, it shows for me what they believe was the best seat in that single room. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's well, for every every time, every oh, single seat. I was okay. not informed well, that it was it had to get over a certain thing. Let's ask yeah. it, let, let's let's figure this. Do we like it? Uh, it's as simple as that. Like I, I like it because like th it does take some of the spontaneity of going to the movies out, right? Because you can't, right? If you if there's six of you Friday night, you think the theaters might be crowded. You can't do that anymore. Right. And you're going to be forced to, uh, you know, ha have an app, whether it's through whatever, however you pay for your seats or whatever, and people are just going to be doing it on their phone. I do agree with you, Jackson. It is going to slow things up because you're going to have people in line, and there's going to be somebody up at the counter going, oh, I don't know, babe, you want to sit over here? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, without question. Most people so, yeah, should do it on um, their phones. Th they kind of told me that, it, you know, it's like going to a Broadway show. If you've been to a Broadway show, you've been to Proctor's, you get your specific seat. This is now what's happening here at Regal Colony. It's like going to a Broadway show. Will the ticket prices eventually get as high as going to a Broadway show? <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jackson, great stuff. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you next Friday. Absolutely. Thank you.